Hey there, it's Erica, and I'm back with another video on how I play The Sims 4 on my 2018 MacBook Air. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I organize my mods and custom content, and the apps that I use to ensure a smooth and stress-free game. As you may know, if you've watched my previous videos, I play The Sims 4 off a of USB, so if you want to learn how I did this, definitely check out my last two videos that are linked, or you can find them in my Sims 4 troubleshooting playlist on my channel. But without further ado, let's get into it. So when I started collecting up mods in CC, I made the mistake of not taking the time to sort or organize the content into their respective categories. Although I did sort them into create a sim and build by, I didn't really go much further. However, recently there was a big patch update that followed the horse ranch pack. I guess it wasn't too recent now, but when it happened, it did break a lot of my mods and custom content where it was really difficult to identify which ones were no longer working. So while it's still a little tricky to identify which mods are broken, I have found a system that makes it way easier to identify the custom content that's broken. And so the apps that I will be discussing today are The Sims 4 Studio, Sims 4 Mod Assistant, and Automator, which is a built-in Mac feature. But first, let's take a look at my mod folder organization. A good rule of thumb for organizing your mod folder is to have any .package file can be stored five folders deep. So this is counting the mod folder as zero. Package files are typically custom content, such as create a sim item and also build by objects. However, some gameplay mods and functional items also come as a .package file. On the other hand, any .script file, such as gameplay mods, UI cheats, MCC command center, etc., they can only be placed one folder deep, and this is counting the mods folder as zero as well. So script files typically come in their own folders, such as little MS Sam's mods. Um, I usually store these folders directly in the mods folder just to keep them all together. But a good idea is to keep the script mods and their related .package files all together because there are types of mods that usually need to be updated whenever there is a large patch update. So keeping them together just makes it easier to delete the broken and outdated mods and then replace it. So when you jump into my mods folder, you can see that I have a CC folder, which is custom content, and a gameplay mods folder. So in the gameplay mods folder, this is where I store all of the mods that are .package, but are not custom content. So you can see a lot of what is considered to be small mods or add-ons, which are smaller files, and therefore they don't really need the override to run their own script to work. So I just have them in their own folder just to keep them all together. Now let's jump into the CC folder. So this contains majority of my custom content, and in this folder I have items categorized into create a sim and into build by items. So under build by, I have it sorted into functional items, merge sets, and sets by creator. So the functional items folder, as you can probably imagine, is for content that I downloaded that they're not just for decor, but they're also functional. So some examples would be the wall phone and the functional wine. And then also under the build by folder, I have sets placed into their own folder and then merge sets folder. So the merge folder is sets that I merged together using the Sims 4 Studio to amalgamate the files, which I'll get into more detail later in the next part of this video. And then in the sets folder, I have sets by creator and a folder of individual build by items that they're just downloads, not in a set. So now let's hop into the create a sim folder. And in here, I do have it broken down into each clothing and hair category. So I also have clothes and hair sets that are in their own folders as well. And then when I download a sim, I like to keep all of their items together just so I know where to find them. And then I also have my toddler and infant and kid CC that are in their own folders as well. But yeah, so I hope this gives you an idea on how I sort my mods and custom content. I do find that sorting your mods in CC properly is super important, especially to help identifying mods that are broken or outdated, even just ones that you don't use or like anymore. So if you're new at collecting mods or if you just want to be more organized, I highly recommend detailed sorting. Um, it may take a little few extra seconds or moments to file them when you're mod shopping, but it's definitely worth it in my opinion, and you'll thank yourself later. For the second part of this video, I'm going to give you a brief breakdown of the three supporting applications that I use to make my organizing and mod updating process a lot easier. And of course, all of these applications will be linked in the description box for you to download afterwards. So the first app that I use is The Sims 4 Studio. This app has a lot to unpack, but the star features that I want to highlight is the ability to view your custom content. So if you go into the app and you have it synced with your game, don't worry, it does sync with the game on the USB, you can actually view all of your CC items as a gallery. 
So this function, I find it super helpful when you're trying to locate mods that you downloaded that are either glitchy or that you don't like or you know you don't use anymore. And I especially like this feature when I go mod shopping because when I pull up the mods into the downloads folder and I put them into the Sims 4 mods folder, um, I can actually view them before entering the game. So if I download something that's glitchy or that I know that I don't like upon first sight, um, I can just delete before even going into the game. However, though, this function isn't perfect, um, so you can view cast sims pretty well, but when it comes to build and buy items, um, if they're too large, they just won't fit in the window. And it is also good to note that this feature doesn't really work for merged packages. You'll only be able to see the one item from the set, um, so you'll have to unmerge them to go through the individual contents. And an important note, if you decide that you don't want a CC item, you can delete it using the delete button on the app. However, the app does permanently delete the item for your computer, so it doesn't go into the trash and you can't recover it. So I would just keep that in mind when deleting items that if you don't want to fully commit to deleting it, you can just locate that file in its respective folder and you manually delete it. And then with that, I'm just going to close the CC viewer window and show you how you can unmerge the merged files. So all you need to do is go to content management and select merge or unmerge files. For this example, I'm going to locate a merged file that I know that has glitch items in it. So I'm just going to select unmerge, then browse to find the file. And then once you've selected your file, you'll just, you'll see that there's another browse located underneath it. This is where the output is going to be stored. So to make sure I don't lose my files, I'm just going to put them in here so that I can easily find them. And then I'll automatically open the folder location. And if you open it, you'll see that all the items from that pack that you just unmerged are there. And now all you're going to do is go back to the CC viewer and then try to locate the items that are glitching. So I finally found the item that I was looking for and you can see here that it's grayed out. So I'm just going to delete the broken file. And then now I'm going to locate the merged file and delete it to be replaced by the unmerged file. And I almost forgot about this, but when you merge or unmerge items, it doesn't actually delete the original. So what you can do is just delete this folder after you make sure that you're replacing it with the new folder of merged or unmerged files. Another quick tip about this app is that you can use it to actually allow or prevent your townies or NPCs from wearing your custom content. And of course, there's a ton of other features to play around with, so you can also just look at those in that window when you have the app. So the next app that I use is called Sims 4 Mod Assistant. Now, this app may not be as dynamic as the Sims 4 Studio, but I find that they work really well together. So for me, the main purpose for Mod Assistant is essentially to determine mod duplicates and if there are any mod conflicts. Typically, you can just ignore the skip files, so if nothing pops up, then you're probably good to go. However, if I did have duplicate files, this is where they would pop up. And then what I would do is just locate where they are using the the file locator at the bottom of the window, and then I would just delete the duplicates. But it is important to note that the app isn't perfect, and sometimes it'll state that like a mod recolor or an override is a duplicate, even though it's not. So just be sure to use The Sims 4 Studio to pull up the item before actually deleting it. So the last app that I want to quickly go over is using your Mac's built-in feature Automator, and this is to change the file name of your mods and custom content. So typically when you download mods and custom content, you'll see that the creators may put like special characters in the file name, and sometimes they do this because it helps them keep track of and organize their files, and it's also for you to identify the creator when you download this custom content. However, these special characters are actually harder for your computer to read, and so they cause your game to run slower. So Bluebellflora actually did us all of a favor and created an automator app for us to use to quickly remove all of these characters. So if you want to read more about how the app works, I have also included a link in the description box to our website explaining this. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to use this. So I'm going to start by dragging the automator to my toolbar at the bottom of my screen. Then for efficiency, I'm just going to stop the toolbar from automatically hiding so it doesn't disappear on me. You don't have to do this. I just find it's annoying when the toolbar disappears while I'm doing it. So now I'm going to open my downloads folder. However, I do recommend that you remove characters from all of your custom content, not just your recently downloaded ones, just because it helps with load times. And so all you're going to have to do is change your folder to view in list mode and then hold command A or select all and just drag all of them to the automator. And that's it. You can also do this for all the folders as well as all the package files. However, I wouldn't really mess with script mods, but I would do it with any of your package contents in your folders. Those should be fine. But yeah, going forward, every time I go on a mod shopping spree, I like to make sure that I pull them up in the Sims 4 Studio, check to see if I like them, and then I remove their special characters all before I file them. I know it's a couple of extra steps, but at least it saves me time down the road and it also makes my computer load a little bit faster.
So this next part is just very brief. I just basically want to talk about organizing your links and resources that are on your web browser. So when it comes to patch updates, you always want to make sure that you're prepared to locate, update, and replace your mods. Typically, you don't have to worry about individual custom content um, or most functional mods or small gameplay mods. They're normally fine with every patch, but you will at times need to update your script mods. And so let me show you a few of my resources that I use to organize my links to be able to find these mods again. So when I download a script mod, such as UI Cheats, MCC Command Center, Toolbox, XML Injector, etc., I always make sure to favor or bookmark the website that I downloaded them from. This way, it just makes them a lot easier to check to see if there's been new updates or other information about the mod. I also save the links from most functional mods that are package files just in case they release a new patch that either conflicts with it or has the same information. However, let's say that you updated all of your main mods and you're still experiencing mod glitches. So Scarlet created an ongoing thread that tells you which mods have been updated or no longer work. And I will link this resource down below as well. But as far as bookmarking goes, I also have my create a sim backgrounds, and my loading screens saved on my browser just so I can find them if I find one that I like. I also bookmark my mods that I want to download just to keep everything in one place. So now that you have all of your mods organized, and if you choose to download the supporting apps that I talked about today, you can utilize these tips to clean up your mods folder. So when I say clean up, I basically mean regularly going through your mods and custom content to identify which mods you don't use often, ones that are broken, outdated, or just ones that you don't like anymore. So to do this cleanup process, you can simply follow my steps to view your custom content gallery, and then you can delete or store items elsewhere, which brings us to the final part of this tutorial. So if you watched my previous video, which I will link down below, um, on storing your Sims 4 game on a USB, you may recall that my tips to get most of your external storage are to store your gameplay specific items or extra creative sim backgrounds and loading screens all for future use on your USB. You can also store mods that you're not currently using, but you don't want to get rid of them. You could just leave them on the USB as well. So by storing some of your files externally, which may not be a USB, but could be a Google Drive or a mod archive folder on your hard drive, you can really cut down on the time that it takes for your Sims 4 to run while also being conscious of the amount of content and mods that you use. But just before I end this tutorial, I just want to quickly show you how to do the most important step of all of it. And this is enabling mods and custom content in your Sims 4 game. So once you have your Sims 4 opened, you're just going to navigate to the game options, go to other, and then check off the script mods allowed box as well as enable custom content and mods box. Then just apply changes, close and reopen the game. So that brings us to the end of this tutorial, and I hope that this was helpful to you and maybe provide you with some inspiration, well-needed organization, and deep cleaning of your mods folder. I also hope that your game runs smoother now, but as always, if you want to see more Sims-related content of mine, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out when new videos are posted. And feel free to reach out with any questions, and I'll try my best to help. Bye for now!